Design, Comparisons, 144Hz Display Test, Software, Gaming Software, 144 frames per second gaming tests, Benchmarks, and finally cameras, this is my unboxing and in-depth review of the Red Magic 5S, the iterative upgrade from the 5G that we saw earlier on this year. Pricing of the global variant will drop pretty soon, it is said to be under 700 USD. And if you want game time anytime, make sure that you head over to the Red Magic website in order to enter into their fifth space competition where you could potentially win a Red Magic 5S. Of course, we have a USB a Type C to Type A cable in the box, and we also have an 18 watt charging brick. If you want the 55 watt charging brick, which is indeed compatible with the device, you'll have to splurge a little extra. And we do have a nice little feel at the bottom of the box here. At the front of the phone, you can see that we do have an in display fingerprint sensor. And this is indeed the Pulse version of the phone. Pulse only comes with the 12 gig, 256 gig ROM version, and it looks absolutely spectacular. It pretty much goes from a red into a pinkish fade to a blue to baby blue fade, and it looks really, really unique. It is slightly more glossy than the Pulse version that we saw on the 5G. And this time around, you get a transparent case included in the box with some very strange edges, though I guess it could kind of improve your gameplay. Nice little added touch there on your Red Magic. We have a power button on the right hand side, a non-split volume rocker. We also have our wonderful touch triggers which have been brought back from the 5G, though they are up to 320 hertz touch sampling rate which is great and we do still have those wonderful trigger indents. I really hate the smooth feeling on other flagship gaming phones of 2020 and the Black Shark 3 Pros pop-up ones are pretty cool but then again it's a moving part. We have a 15,000 revolutions per minute turbo fan with an intake and exhaust fan on either side of the phone. This is the only gaming phone to ever do this and it has increased by 45% in terms of ventilation. We do have the little game space button on the side there, well the little slider and we have a magnetic adapter port for accessories at the bottom of the phone. We also have that wonderful 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which most gaming phones of 2020 are actually ditching. I'm really glad to see that Red Magic keeping it along. Unfortunately, no micro SD card support, but we do indeed have dual SIM tray, USB 3.1 speeds, and dual sounding DTSX speakers. We unfortunately do not have that RGB effect at the back of the phone, but that is for a very good reason, but at least we still have the red LED lights at the bottom of the phone. And the reason for this is because we now have a silver plated cooler at the back, AG stands for silver. So your phone should get ridiculously cool. And if you're not impressed with that, you can always pick up their eye stock, which they'll sell separately. I'll be getting my hands on one soon to test out. We also have a Gorilla Glass front and back with an aluminum frame. And looking at the design of other phones, yes, we don't have all those flashy lights, even when compared to its little brother, the Red Magic 5G. But I really kind of like that silver plating. I mean, have you ever heard of a phone with silver in it, period, let alone silver plating for a cooling system? It is a little bit heavier than the Red Magic 5G, but lighter than all other gaming phones. And the only other gaming phone on the market that is a flagship gaming phone currently is the Black Shark 3 with a headphone jack. Other than that, only the Red Magic 5S and 5G have a headphone jack. In the front, we have a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio display. It is AMOLED with 16 million colors. It is, of course, a full HD plus resolution with 600 nits typical brightness, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, and 144 hertz display with 240 touch sampling rates. We do have an AMOLED screen over here, of course, on all devices over here. And comparing it to them, it seems pretty much just as bright as every single one. It doesn't have the biggest bezels, but it doesn't have the smallest either. I think that's more towards the Black Shark 3 Pro. So the most important selling point here is that incredible 144 hertz display with 240 hertz touch sampling rate. So let's go ahead and test the presets that we have on the device. 60 all the way on the left, 90 in the middle, 144 on the right hand side. Slow it down. I haven't recorded in slow motion here, guys. I do have a slow motion recording of something similar to this on my channel. Make sure that you go check it out after this video. But it's just to give you a little bit of an idea of how how much smoother it would feel in your hand. Honestly, you have to feel this phone for yourself. It feels absolutely buttery smooth. The Red Magic 5S, in my opinion, is the smoothest, quickest smartphone I've ever used in my life. Of course, we have a whole bunch of other phones that are just as smooth though with 144 hertz displays. And the ROG phone has a hidden 160 hertz feature 
but in all fairness it doesn't really look that much better or in reality feel any better than 144 hertz so i guess that is why the rog phone 3 didn't actually ship with that we also have a few little interesting features such as showing you when you're going to be using high power consumption when you reach a certain brightness level this was lacking in the previous 5g phone and we can also change different color effects as well as night lights and we also have dark mode which has really nice deep blacks instead of those gray looks that you get on many other devices and of course we have a fully fledged always on display which looks pretty great with some different funky customization options that you do have where you can switch your picture to the top or below the clock a few little cool things that just put a smile on your face. Once you get past that, you can unlock your phone using an optical reader underneath the screen. And compared to the Red Magic 5G, it's pretty similar there. And it is a tad slower than the Asus ROG Phone 3, but it is also a much cheaper device. As for facial recognition, Red Magic had a few issues in the 5G. I can safely say that has completely been resolved. It is super, super snappy. It is a lot quicker than its predecessor, the 5G, and even quicker than that of the ROG Phone 3. When you finally get into that phone, once you have unlocked it, we do have the Red Magic OS 3.5 and it is more stock than ever. Of course, you can go to some different funky gaming themes, which look pretty cool with some dynamic themes as well. But I really like the stock feel of it and it is very, very Google driven, guys. You have Google on the left hand side, Google Assistant's rooted into the device itself and a whole bunch of regular Google features that you would see on a phone such as a Pixel or even the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. We do also have full screen navigation gestures though I like the fact that they still include if you want the option for going back by sliding up from the bottom corners of the screen. I actually do prefer this. We also have some awesome digital well-being options and the haptics feel absolutely superb for a gaming smartphone. Though the most important thing about a gaming smartphone is gaming. So with a flick of the switch on the side of the phone, we enter the Red Magic game space and it looks just as it did before with a few little tweaks and improvements to make your experience a bit better. Of course, we also have that wonderful cooling fan. You can actually customize this within the regular settings of the phone as well because it can actually turn on when you start charging. We also have a load of different modes such as the choreographer mode over here in order to make your game look a little bit brighter and, and add some color in spaces where it is missing. This is not to improve the overall quality, but just so that you can kind of see your enemy a tad quicker than he can see you. A really interesting feature, I would say. We also have super performance mode in order to really boost it up. And we have macro mode, so you can go ahead and input a bunch of stuff and try and not die while doing it like I did. And then you can single tap it or you can loop tap it and then it'll just keep replaying what you just recorded without actually touching the screen, which is really cool. The dynamic vibration is limited to a few games or you can use your fan on any game. We also have a crosshair option much like we saw in the ROG Phone 3 which is a neat little extra feature. Of course we have those touch triggers they are not split and you cannot use four partitions as seen in the ROG Phone 3 but honestly guys the indents of it just make it so much better than the touch triggers on any other gaming phone around. Call of Duty Mobile is what we play now on max settings FPS and graphics wise we're hitting 60 fps because that is the cap of the game not the phone Well, those speakers sound absolutely phenomenal. Now we're moving on to PUBG Mobile. This is the global version of the game. Unfortunately, we have no 90 FPS option over here. We're stuck to 60 because that is the cap of the game. Once again, not the cap of the phone, but it looks absolutely stunning. Now for PUBG Mobile, the Chinese version known as Game for Peace, because we can actually hit 90 FPS at low graphics settings, something that is soon to be coming to all phones global version. And we're actually hitting it. That is absolutely epic.
Bullet Force is our next game with an unlimited FPS cap. So if you can hit 144 on a phone, you should be able to with the incredible Snapdragon 865 powered Nubia Red Magic 5S. So it fluctuates from time to time, but guys, we're getting more frames per second than the actual refresh rate of the display. Once again, exceeding that frames per second barrier in a game of Real Racing 3, the Red Magic 5S is an absolute gaming machine. Next up, we're going to be testing out some benchmarks to see if this has actually improved. From the Red Magic 5G, we're going to be comparing the battery degrees in Celsius as well as the percentage at the end of the test as well as the CPU in degrees in Celsius. We're going to speed through and two to stay tuned for a more detailed one in the coming weeks. Battery drain at the end of the test, minus 5%. Pretty much on par with the competition. We added 7.7 .7 degrees in Celsius, though the peak temperature was actually lower thanks to that internal fan. The CPU degrees in Celsius not getting quite as hot as the Snapdragon 865 Plus part smartphones at 41 degrees in Celsius. Out of all the phones that I've tested being two Snapdragon 865 Plus smartphones, the Red Magic 5S actually came in second place with the vanilla Snapdragon 865. Yes, it did indeed beat the ROG Phone 3, which has a Snapdragon 865. Plus. Now we're going to go ahead and test out Geekbench 5. I'm going to speed through it once again so we can get to the final results at the end of the test. When it comes to single core and multi core CPU, for single core it was actually worse than the average Snapdragon 865 powered smartphone, but the multi core was actually a little better. But the team at Red Magic have actually told me that these scores have improved a lot, including the Antutu benchmark scores with that incredible iStock. So I'm super excited to get my hands on one of them. When it comes to OpenCL API, a GPU benchmark test, once again, right in the middle of the average Snapdragon 865 and the leading 865 Plus, which is really good considering this is still the vanilla Snapdragon 865 chip. And with Vulkan GPU API benchmark testing, it wasn't quite as good as the 865 Plus once again, but actually quite a lot better than the average Snapdragon 865 powered smartphone. When it comes to the selfie cam, we do indeed have a 12 megapixel selfie snapper. That is the resolution after I export the picture to my PC. The selfies look nice and clean for a gaming phone nonetheless, but unfortunately no portrait mode. This is Technic recording a 1080p 30fps video on the Nubia Red Magic 5S. It is completely capped at 1080p and 30fps. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when recording using the selfie cam. At the back, things are once again unchanged. 64 megapixel Sony IMX 686 sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and 2 megapixel megapixel <laughs> macro sensor with a max video recording of 8K 30fps. You can only take an ultra wide shot using the professional mode within the camera, but it doesn't look half bad. The main 64 megapixel looks great. It looks even better with a binned shot and three times digital zoom, five times, and even the max zoom being 10 times doesn't look look that good, but I say this on every single gaming phone review I have done in the past year. When it comes to portrait shots, it actually looks surprisingly decent with minimal edge detection over there. And the macro sensor is pretty decent. We do have 8K at 30 FPS, so because it's running at 30 frames per second, it is probably upscaled from 6K, though it still looks pretty nice. These are not the most perfect lighting conditions since the sun was pretty much going down. 4K at 60 FPS looks nice, smooth, and stable, especially for a gaming smartphone. 1080p at 60 FPS is also a great little extra option over there. It's good to know that we have 1080p and 4K at 60 FPS. This is lacking in the Lenovo. However, there is no stabilization options, but you never really see this in gaming smartphones, but it is still pretty darn stable. The Nubia Red Magic 5S 
is more than just an iterative upgrade from its predecessor which released earlier on this year. It looks absolutely phenomenal, it actually feels a little bit more solid and you can definitely see that they've slightly fine tuned that incredible 144Hz display. It feels more smooth than I have ever felt on a gaming smartphone before and it is an absolute gaming machine let alone super fluid when just moving about your phone in day-to-day -day tasks. This to me is more than just a gaming phone. It is a gaming phone that you can use as an everyday phone. And that is something that the competition just can't get right.